All right. So thanks everybody for joining once again. This is office hours. So we have only 15 minutes time um, to complete Grafana setup. Um, my name is Devaji. And uh, again, thanks everybody that probably you are having lunch and you have taken your time out for this session. So today um, we are going to discuss Amazon Manage Grafana. Probably you can see my screen. Anybody can confirm that you can see my screen. Yes, a thumbs up. In chat, you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, no. Without your confirmation, we cannot go. I can see uh, people are there, but only saying yes or no. Yeah, okay. Arti said yes. All right. So in this Amazon Manage Grafana, probably you know the Grafana is a tool, is open source tool. Um, and you install this Grafana tool on typically a virtual machine, okay, or EC2, correct? Um, but AWS has launched or AWS has got their own service called Amazon Managed Grafana. That means if you go ahead with that, then you have the same kind of um, flexibility of using Managed Grafana uh, in a serverless manner, right? And then you can analyze, monitor, and, you know, and create a different kind of visualizations. So in next few minutes, I will show you end to end how to create the Amazon Manage Grafana on AWS, right? So a couple of things first, before you go and create Amazon Manage Grafana, I mean, create workspace, make sure that you have a proper VPC is configured. When I say proper VPC, that means proper public subnet, private subnet, and you really need to have a NAND gateway. So these are kind of little prerequisites for that. So if I go back and just show you that what are the things I have configured for this uh, setup. So if I go to my VPC, okay, and inside the VPC, you will see um, there are VPC called Grafana. If I click on your VPC, all right. And inside your VPC, it's still loading for me. Okay, so the graph on a VPC. And inside the VPC, I have got subnets, routing table, etc. So if I go to subnets, because these are the again, like I, I repeat, it's a little mandatory or prerequisite stuff for Grafana. So if we just go and see, I have created um two subnets, those are private subnets. Here it is. And another one, that's one. And then I have got two public subnets, public uh, Grafana 2 and public 1 Grafana. So these are the public and private subnets. And if I go to, you know, private subnet and go to routing tables, you can see my default gateway is actually routing through NAT instances or NAT gateway. So I have created a NAT gateway there first. So if I go to NAT gateway, that is the gateway uh, I have created and all of my default routing is going through um, this NAT, right? The whole uh, objective uh, why I have created that because I'm going to um, deploy this Grafana workspace in the private subnet and this Grafana will, they need to, uh, you know, communicate through the NAT instances. Um, in the security group section is also very important. So this is another prerequisite, like, you know, you need to really have a proper security groups and port 3000 should be open. Uh, I've already done that. If you know how to create a security group or if you don't know, just take a look for a few seconds. If I go to um, another uh, tab and straight go to EC2 and in the EC2 um, console, you will get there's option called security groups right there. Here, you click on the security groups. Hold on that. And I have created a security group called Grafana. Still loading for me. Security groups. Here, here you go the Grafana security group. And for me, I have created 
all inbound it is uh, all uh, but it is not a best practice but 3000 port must be on there okay so now um, in the search you simply type amazon managed grafana grafana and you land on this amazon managed grafana okay i'm already here okay so from from here you can create your workspace if i go and create workspace just give it a name like demo grafana i'm just still looking my time uh, because these are office hours i have to close in next uh, 10 minutes so in the demo grafana and all you need to fill it up i mean these are op all optional go and next there are two ways for authentications one is sso one is sml or saml so um, you can go ahead at the sso it is pretty straightforward and useful for many production use cases so you really need to have the sso um, to log in the Amazon Manage Grafana console. And you need a service manage permission type, which is by default. And here, which is most important, like you need to select a proper VPC. Okay. So for us, we have created a VPC called Grafana VPC, already showed you. And inside that, you need to map a subnets. So I'm going to deploy this Manage Grafana in private subnets. And you know, you really need to have at least two uh, AZs or availability zones um, for this Grafana setup process. And I have created the same way, like, you know, just mapped two subnets. And here you go, like, you know, proper security group you have also mapped, okay? So these are the main few things from the networking perspective you have to do during the Grafana launch process. And now there's additional uh, options like you need to turn Grafana alerting and plugin management so that you can install a lot of plugins I will show you and then simply go and click next. Here it is asking what are the data sources you need? Like, you know, do you like to um, manage or monitor IoT, X-Ray, AWS, Amazon CloudWatch, etc., Redshift? Mm -hmm. It's a bug location. Questions? Please go mute if I'm not talking this. So just select all of the data sources, right? And SNS, I will come to you if you have any questions, maybe in the next or last four minutes. Um, and then click start and uh, all contributions. Have, and then you have to create workspace, right? So. If you click and go create workspace, it will take um, almost five to seven minutes uh, to complete the entire process. Since I don't have much time here, or we don't have much time here, only 15 minutes. So for you, you have to create workspace. You have to wait for five to seven minutes. But for me, in interest of time, I've already created a graph on the same process I showed you. And if I just go and hit this graph on a, um, you know, uh, workspace options, there's an option called data source. But before you get into data source, you have to have configured a proper SSO. So from this option, you just go and configure your SSO identity centers. So I've created a Grafana user, but you can create your own um, you know, uh, users. Like uh, from there, you can create a users called, you know, maybe whatever you can create and give them a admin access okay it is very very important if i just go and select grafana users this particular user has got a proper admin access okay very very important otherwise there are a lot of um problem that you know this person cannot access um, something like that so this is very important so yeah. please go mute guys um so now I follow the same process. Danish, can you please go mute? Getting a lot of background noise. Okay. Uh, from here, I've created the same thing. If I go and create Grafana, okay. So what I've done, I have completed the AWS SSO, which is enabled. You have to provide the right permission for that. And if you go to data sources option, you see, um, you know, all of the data sources we have enabled. Okay, and from there you can actually, uh, you know, monitor and manage different data sources. 
So let's say you want to impute it to the CloudWatch, simply go and configure in Grafana. Launch from there, and then it will uh, take you to a uh, you know Grafana console, and it will be asking the SSO for you, something like that. So it's integrated with SSO, and if I just go and sign in with SSO, okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry. We can monitor through the cloud one and Grafana. So what is the difference uh, between them? Yeah, so Grafana is a very mature, um, you know, uh, from CloudWatch. CloudWatch, I'm not saying CloudWatch is not that mature, but in Grafana, you can do a whole lot of, you know, deep level, um, you know, visualizations. Uh, like, you know, you can create your own sort of, you know, customizations, query pattern and whole lot of stuff. So additional, let's say it is typically designed for your container workload to manage because CloudWatch is okay, but uh, probably you've heard about Prometheus, right? The Grafana, these are typically designed for your container workload management and monitoring. So to answer your questions, um, if your workload is running on container Docker uh, Kubernetes, then Grafana is always a good friend for you. So now I've logged in here through a cloud watch, couple of options you need to know first. So automatically it will, you land on this cloud watch console, but all you need to select your um, proper region, let's say North Virginia region for me, for you, maybe the different region. And the first thing it will be asking that AWS specific region name like US East one, and then you can you have to add the data source something i've done so if i just go and click data source because if you don't do that then the whole objective of gravana will not uh, make a use for it i mean this is something you know from the part of the steps part of the configuration steps to so see that i have just added my cloud watch uh, add-ons here and if you go to settings option and here in the settings options, probably you need to save and test these connectors. Here, save and test. And the moment you see the successful query in the CloudWatch Matrix API 2, then uh, finally uh, it is integrated with your CloudWatch. And since I don't have anything there in the CloudWatch, but for you, uh, you might have some of the thing like from here, you have to create the dashboard and then you have to add different widgets, library, uh, or visualizations. And let's say this is the connector and there are a lot of, um, you know, as I said, the query as social ask questions, you can also do a transformations, you can, you know, alert. And if I go back to new connections, if you see here from new connections, you can see there are a whole lot of third party integrations can be there. You can actually integrate the Google Analytics uh, you can also integrate the Azure, you know, DevOps. So it is a very, very comprehensive. If you have a multi-cloud uh, type of, you know, uh, there, then you can actually integrate with all of them. Let's say if I have Athena, you can, you know, install the Athena plugins from there. And then you can also uh, manage, monitor Athena straight from Grafana. Okay. So nice tool. Um, in production environment, there are a lot of folks, DevOps guys, they love using Grafana. Um, sometimes they use EC2 based approach, but if you use manage Grafana, then again, you know, all of the complexity of the management, you know, backup, high availability, uh, everything will be taken care of by your CSP. Here is AWS. 228, um, uh, that's a uh, 15 minutes um, office hours. I'm open to take questions for last two minutes. If you have any, let me. Hi, Devojit. Shutta yeah. Brutha here. Yes, sir. Uh, I just have one question. Why do you need to ha have uh, NAT, not IGW? Very good questions. So Grafana, you have to install in the private subnet from the security perspective. And all of the APIs are getting called between Grafana and uh, the AWS services through um, their sing you know, internal um, network. So since Grafana, you can install on public subnet, 
but you know right you know it's a public stuff is always a kind of risky and you know it's a basic security uh, gaps so if you install in the private subnet the nat is basically from there all of the traffic is going through nat for all of the third party um, you know integrations because uh, in the private subnets if you don't have nat then probably you cannot call the other third party apis okay Super. Thank you so much. And I can see Danis very well, you know, and we, we, we all see, we have seen that your baby there. <laughs> um, God bless you guys. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we'll thanks, thanks, next time. Bye. Take care.